All right. Uh, so uh, before uh, we get started, just to um, tell you guys that about this tool, like you can actually ask questions throughout the session on the Q&A tab on your right, and we will answer them at the end of the session, right? Um, yeah, so this, this session is going to be about how Purple is using platform engineering to scale, right? And uh, myself is Anshul Sao, and I am the CTO and co-founder for Facets.cloud, uh, which is a modern DevOps platform which enables platform engineering. And um, our guest here is Suesh, who is the co-founder and CTO of Purple, uh, which is a like, unicorn D2C brand. And I am sure you have played, he has played a significant role in this journey. Uh, so with that, uh, uh, let me just start with some questions, Suesh. Uh, so could you just start with your a brief introduction about Purple and yourself, you know, and a little bit about the journey to becoming a unicorn? Sure. First of all, Anshul, thanks for having me. Uh, super excited to be a part of uh, part of this initiative. Uh, yeah, I mean, about Purple, where do I start? I think it's been about 11 years now that we've been a part of this journey. For people who don't know about Purple, Purple is a beauty tech company. Uh, we have two uh, business units. One is a D2C uh, beauty platform, which is purple.com. Uh, we see about 12 million monthly active users uh, on app and web there. Uh, so pretty scaled up platform uh, for beauty in India. Uh, and the second part of the business is uh, about CPG, which is we have our own brands where which we distribute offline to tens of thousands of touch points. Brands like Faces Canada, Good Vibes, Karmizi, which are all into the beauty and personal care space. So, uh, so, so that is about about the business. Uh, well, uh, you know, being the co-founder CTO, of course, a lot of time initially was spent on building uh, the platform itself, uh, and it is you know truly uh, endearing to see the kind of growth that we have had, especially in the last two three years. Uh, so yeah, that's a bit about the business. Great, great, and and. I'm sure, uh, although it's so scaled up and a massive system now, but it must have had its own humble beginnings, you know. Uh, so if you can just describe about the uh, how the technology landscape has changed on Purple over the years uh, so that our audience can relate to uh, different stages of, you know, uh, being in a company. Yeah, Sure. I think uh, I would say we were very fortunate uh, to be a part of this evolving tech ecospace where the macro trends were also changing, right? So right, right from the beginning in 2012, where AWS was also in a nascent stage into India, and you you know you were kind of seeing players between you know having dedicated servers and managing everything on their own, and we were one of those in the in the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. To now, you know where infrastructure was available as a service, and now platforms are available as a service. That evolution is truly you know being really remarkable. As for purple, I think yes. Uh, you know, typically when uh, when I when I speak to new joinees in my company, I just draw a square and I say that that was our architecture back in 2012. So we had one machine, uh, and and that used to do everything. The database was hosted there. The couch-based servers were you know uh, were inside that, and everything was that right. Uh, we were always a very lean team, right? Uh, so till about 2019, 2020, when, you know, even, even at that stage, we had three or four million mouth, we had only 15 to 20 engineers. Uh, and uh -huh. hence the evolution for us is, is, you know, one of grit and, you know, a, a scale up in the right manner. Uh, mm -hmm. The evolution of technology, obviously, we took the same route, right? I think we started with a monolith. It was easy to manage. Uh, lesser people were collaborating in the code. Uh, right, so it was fairly easy to uh, easy to manage from that perspective. We started out by branching out the databases into different servers. Uh, started introducing new kinds of databases uh, like Elasticsearch or Redis or you know MongoDB to ensure that the right kind of database is used for the right use case. Uh, mm -hmm. We started with a logical division first in our application, where you know uh, while hosted on the same physical server, the same repository, but Logically, it was segregated into APIs and front-end code. So we started breaking the monolith in that way. But I think over the last two, three years, it has really evolved into a truly uh, microservices-based architecture to, you know, to, to stay true to the use case that we have right now because we are operating at tremendous scale. And mm. 
evolution specifically in the last 3 to 4 years has been one of breaking in breaking the entire backend system into one giant monolith into multiple domain based services uh, and right. uh, that is the journey that that we are still on right now we are about 80 85% there but uh, you know that is a journey that we still take so we've seen like increase in massive complexity uh, over the years we have witnessed about seven or eight different kinds of databases uh, that that we use for different use cases and just for everybody's perspective the kind of applications that we use host uh, that we build for our customers are obviously the storefront applications but also the martech applications as well as the supply chain applications as well as data driven data applications right so it's it's a it's a plethora of things that that we do to ensure that we are able to serve our customers right right so so it's safe to say that it has become a very diverse system and a very contrasting of you know how it started of course uh, and yeah so so in this journey where you were actually breaking down uh, you know monolith into microservices and all were there any specific challenges related to infrastructure per se uh, which you faced uh, do you, and and of course these challenges would have been different at different times but something which comes on top of your head uh, if you can talk about that right no i actually sure remember you know few instances very distinctly and i think uh, till the time we were a small team and we were on on a monolith right we used to feel very powerful very empowered you could uh, you know you could uh, change deploy changes very faster you can actually ensure that you are actually contributing to the value creation side rather than the operations side of of things and that is exactly wh- where everybody you know wants to be right but i think uh, the moment our scale started growing we realized that this architecture is not going to be our friend for too long and hence we decided to take up of you know branching out different domain based services whether catalog became a different service and something else became a different service and and that that journey when we started doing that journey right uh, i think the first challenge uh, that that uh, we faced was that the dynamics completely changed for us from an infrastructure perspective right so imagine a team you know maybe you know working out of one auto scaling uh, group and a few database mm-hmm. servers yeah. now suddenly having uh, to manage kubernetes clusters a lot of intra uh, you know service conversations at play uh, so interactions between services uh, right so suddenly uh, that complexity started increasing and just like a frog in a boiling pot we didn't realize it initially but when mm-hmm. we started with three or four services that became a very big problem for us uh and i think that uh, i i still believe that you know maybe 2019 2020 was that time where the, that problem became too large for us and uh, tried you know bunch of things uh, as as recommended by various people so you know we had a dedicated devops team because prior to that it was hardly you know it was a very easy thing to manage on our own few servers and uh, you know and, mm. and uh, the observability management and all of these things are uh, are managed at end but i think post that you know we tried out uh, you know outsourcing uh, the entire uh, infrastructure management uh, to a company but uh, that did not work for us because uh, you know nobody will be able to understand your context the way your engineers are able to understand your context right and True. i think and i think uh, the sheer lack of you know that context uh, avoids people from prioritizing in the right manner and Uh, and you know there are many cases where people were trying to go by the book but probably you know there is a combination of a short term plus long term solution we required so that didn't work for us we also you know tried uh, some bits of automation at our end uh, where you know from a stage where we were at uh, where individuals had knowledge on how to do specific things we graduated mm-hmm. to a checklist manifesto where we had checklists of you know what things need to be done and i'll give you specific examples right what happens if yeah. uh, you know you add a new server or a new service into the mix right there are n number of things that you need to do you need to provision the right user accesses in your database you need to ensure the certain observability and the right kind of logging uh, uh, at an infrastructure level is done you need to ensure that the right scaling of that infrastructure is done and so on and so forth so bunch of things that we had in our checklist but uh, 
again and and you know loosely written uh, automations for some part of it but what we realized was that again we landed up on the same problem of you know tribal knowledge there are few people who knew how to operate those and uh, again at the end of the day engineers did not feel empowered and they did they always felt that there is this separation of of uh, responsibilities that you know my role is to develop the application and then somebody else will take it uh, uh take it to uh, to production and run it there and that sort of really uh you know time and again stifled that growth or that ambition of transforming the infrastructure at the desired pace yeah yeah in fact yeah that i i totally agree and and relate to because as engineers if if you don't feel that your time is going into the value creation or you get bogged down by some other uh, you know external factors and uh, it just doesn't work right like uh, you just feel that uh, maybe this this is like i am hampering the growth of the company or something like that right yeah. and most of the time these factors are not in your control and we have designed it in such a way that developers feel okay okay this is not my cake uh, like if it was a monolith or i could have owned it but now uh, it has become too many things to you know manage Absolutely. right so so given that all through your experience and you have tried multiple things like you said uh, did you evolve to any you know uh, opinion of your own like, right like how it should be done so that maybe you don't have the solution yet but maybe the opinion ki okay if we somehow enable this and maybe you can re- relate it to the monolith days right uh, then maybe it will start working for us did you have something like that no absolutely and i think uh... around that time i also you know was reading a lot on how to structure things internally and i came across this concept from spotify where which talked about giving developers the autonomy right and uh, engineers the autonomy because at the end of the day engineers are your best problem solvers right and yeah. you want to give your best problem solvers the entire autonomy of Uh, right from development stage to deployment to managing the infrastructure bl- blueprint to performance management uh, you know right to iteration of you know what should be the sizing of this infrastructure and so on and that is that is what you would want to give as uh, you know as as a leader to your developers and you would want to empower your developers right uh, but in yeah. in such a case right what ends up happening is that if it is truly autonomous then there will be a lot of inefficiencies built into the system every team would want to do things in their own way which might not be aligned to how we want to build an engineering org uh, you know in many cases many teams will repeat the same things for example yeah. everybody will try to solve for logging as a problem everybody will try to solve for configuration management as a problem and uh, there is a lot of inefficiency built into this right and hence the one thought that really stuck into me was the concept of aligned autonomy right where there is true sense of autonomy for the engineers but at the same time you invest into the platform which ensures that this autonomy is given to them in a very aligned manner right which is aligned to the way you would want to uh, run the organization the way the guardrails that you would want to put on top of this Uh, and and that is that is something that you know i thought would be the perfect way uh, that you could solve this problem but at that point of time it was still just an abstract thought right yeah 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 and and uh, and what you said it truly applies across the companies also right like uh, even like a one company solving certain things is not helping like there are hundreds of engineer doing same thing across the companies as well and uh, it, it totally would make sense if there is something which can you know enable this aligned autonomy um in fact in recent times like in the last couple of years this platform engineering term has come up right and yes. if you, if you just go into the depth of it like what exactly it is i i feel that it is totally aligned autonomy right that is what they preach and uh, what they are saying is that okay uh your devops should become enablers and and you know the developers should be able to self serve if you like build it yourself and deploy yourself and all those philosophies actually come to the same point where you build but build with guardrails right and and i would say then it is pretty much uh, like what you uh, just mentioned right like it is all about achieving aligned autonomy through platform engineering if i may 
put it that way right absolutely and i think you know if if you go into the core tenets of platform engineering and till you know very recently maybe a year or two ago i didn't know that it was officially called platform engineering it was just <laughs> yeah very intuitively you felt that this is the right way to go about things right and and i think that uh, uh, that concept has also now taken a very formative shape uh, in my mind in terms of how it should be i wouldn't say that we are 100% there uh, but mm. at the core of it the basic tenet is that given that you would want to give autonomy to your developers there are a mm. lot of common problems that they would want to solve for right uh, that is point number 1 point number 2 mm. is that uh, that you know while they are solving for these common problems they will also have their own set of individual problems right? Uh, right and the role of the platform engineering function in my head is to ensure that they create uh, tools or platforms on top of which developers can feel empowered to solve their problems right true, for example true. if i'm building building a search application you know i might want to spin up an elastic search instance just to try it out on sandbox it if it did not work i might try something else uh, at in the historical times people used to raise a request to devops team it almost became like a government uh, office because there the devops team is getting requests from all the application teams where you know and the core job then of the devops team was also to manage the operations which is provisioning you know optimizing and things like that whereas they should be focused on solving the problems how do i make sure that you know i automate the operations how do i ensure yeah. that there is security uh, tenets built into what i'm doing how do i ensure that observability is built into every application that i spin up by default how do i ensure that i give five options of different kinds of logging to my developers which is all inbuilt and config driven right if these are the kind of things that either devops people or the platform engineers solve then you truly reach a stage where the developers are truly empowered and they they are truly uh, you know aligned in and still have the autonomy true true now it's perfectly bang on point and in fact even when we were solving our engineering problems in capillary this was the one observation which is which was uncanny that in fact there was a term for it called ticket ops you know because uh, if you just uh, go and see the cadence of devops team they just talk about tickets they just say okay 100 open 30 close this i cannot do this i so it becomes too micro you know we are losing the macro level things uh, by doing very day to day things uh, and 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 it's a waste of talent and time both right like those yeah. those people are talented engineers they should not be investing time in doing one off tasks right uh so yeah totally totally agree with what you just said okay so yeah. for my next next section let me take you back uh, some year, like a year or so where uh, we came uh, and pitched facets to you right uh, first of all i would like to know uh, were you looking out for something at that point when we came uh, and, and what made you uh, choose facets because it was a very early experiment for you as well we were just starting up and and uh, you know the credibility was actually not there as as such so how did you make uh, that uh, difficult choice that you should try us out right so i think you know at that point of time like i mentioned that you know that was becoming a big bottleneck for me to carry on the transformation journey right imagine uh, a company not being able to solve for the problem of scale because you are bottlenecked at the ops level right like devops level right so at that point of time i was actively looking for automation options right and uh, automation for both qa as well as for for infrastructure automation uh, and and all the things or companies you know that i evaluated and they, there again I, i a bunch of things i was looking at so if i was looking at you know if there are tools that can automate infrastructure for me uh, and we also evaluated if there is a company who can come in and write uh, you know the automation scripts for us uh, and uh, you know that we can maybe do on ansible or terraform or combination and and that is something that we can do so these are the options that we were evaluating actively uh, when we reached out to facet but you know i think 
there are problems in both right while at an abstract level and at a, at a theoretical level it sounds really you know uh, beautiful and uh, really utopic that you know there is one platform which will come in and the automation scripts will come in and they will automate your infrastructure but if you really think about it at a at a tactical and an operational level right you would need a lot of collaboration because unless there is collaboration between teams uh, unless uh, it is a very declarative kind of a infrastructure management uh mm -hmm. you would always end up still going to the teams who are managing the scripts they might have written it for once but somebody needs to then manage it sure the thing that you used to take x amount of time might take x by 3 but the problem will still reduce to a ticket ops uh, uh of that sorts right so unless it yeah. is a declarative format which is controlled by my developer uh that all those solutions were not really solving our problems but we still wanted to go ahead with something because that could have been still better than what with the the stage that we were uh and it also needed to be collaborative right because uh you know just the versioning control between uh between you know what is on sandbox versus what is on development infrastructures uh plus the extensibility was just not there that you know i can just tweak few things and spin up another another this thing so for achieving all those things we still needed to go through some hoops and that is where i think uh, we spoke and that really stuck a chord with me because almost everything that i was looking for was something that was available out of the box or at least the platform was extensible to accommodate that uh, that as well and sure you're right that you know uh, uh, i wouldn't agree on the credibility part because uh, you know uh, managing uh from the same platform managing an infrastructure of a company like capillary which in itself has a lot of complex clientele and different kinds of deploys in different regions i'm sure that that definitely lent credibility but you know uh one thing that really struck me was uh how uh you know capable the team was and how open they were to listen to uh to the feedback that we had for them uh as well as you know there are certain things that we wanted in a certain way which was not probably available out of the box but over a period of time were built uh, together so that was i think uh, the rationale on you know where we were in the journey and how did we pick uh, facets true and and we were also very fortunate to get purple in that sense because you know the kind of requirements which were coming from your side and and we built co built many features together right like yeah. you, uh, running your production workloads on spot or whether it be the very fine grained rbac control to actually put in those guardrails and and it was very aligned right what you wanted and what we were building was so aligned that it was a natural partnership so yeah so yeah i totally agree and and regarding the solution which you said earlier like getting the terraform scripts written it is still a you know choice for many people but i just feel that you know building is just the 10% of it right the majority part yeah. is maintaining it and people generally like uh, overlook that part and so basically you they are generally investing in something which will work for them for 6 months right uh, but yeah. what after that yeah yeah because there's, so, there's always a question of uh, instant gratification right and especially now in exactly. generative ai world you can you know can very easily generate scripts that can automate bits and pieces for you but will it yeah. truly work for you when things go 100x or 10x in complexity is the real question and that is that is you know uh, the kind of long term thinking that you need to do as leaders true 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 i totally agree uh so i just wanted to now uh, see uh, so okay we were fitting the bill of what you wanted but now that it has been a year and we have been running purple a part of it in production right uh, so how has been your experience and what has changed you know before and after facets did do you see some positive changes and is it in line with what you wanted oh absolutely i think uh, so two parts to this answer right one is uh, the primary goal with which we entered this partnership right and we started using the tool the primary goal for us was to just add agility into uh, into our transformation process into microservices right and uh, i think that definitely has happened for us 
uh, we i mean and you you were a party to it you have witnessed it uh, the pace at which uh, our developers were then able to move services into microservices uh, was just unparalleled it was unthinkable right for us uh, from a process where team did something ask the devops to deploy on sandbox create an infra on sandbox then validate then replicate again on send, uh, on production or pre prod uh, all of that is now you know completely eliminated the need for that and the developers are empowered so i think that definitely has added agility into uh, you know us moving into microservices and obviously we we started using facets at a place where uh, you know we were a monolith going into microservices so all the problems of people who were already on microservices uh, were not there for us at that point of time but sure. that brings to the second point that once we are on the platform and now we have also have an evolved architecture now we see that there are a bunch of by products so to say as benefits that we are getting right for example uh, to bring about a change across the org for example recently we upgraded the hardened image uh, you know or if you wanted to use a certain kind of infrastructure uh, uh, unit right that uh, that that was instance that was that maybe we have committed now whatever these kind of use cases we the application of that pan uh, pan application is like supremely easy right so that is obviously one part of it uh, that enables you to ensure that uh there are no misses in terms of you know missing out on installing the agents of your observability tool or you know forgetting to add certain things to grafana or things like that so those things have completely been uh, been eliminated so that is like like the by product of that that there are no manual misses now because of course everything is more declarative more uh, uh more guardrail driven and and so on and so forth uh apart from that you know obviously there are things like we get a birds eye view of you know what is exactly happening in a very structured manner uh, there are things that that are problems for us right now that we can work with we have actually worked with you guys to solve for it for example things like service mesh or circuit breaking and all of these things which become a problem when you actually you know go into uh, the microservices architecture those are the kind of things that you need to then uh, incorporate Uh, into into your uh, uh, into your tool so that everybody is able to uh, to use it so there are many by products uh, as benefits right obviously usage of spot instances out of the box uh, which ensures that you are able to control your costs uh, uh, you know ensuring that there is extensibility in the use cases that you are building for uh, so that in future if you want to for example institutionalize a certain way of doing logging you are able to do that or if you are able to institutionalize the presence of say observability uh, uh, tool you are able to do that uh, i think those are just the by products of what we have seen but i think the primary goal with which we entered i think we have definitely achieved which is a lot of agility in uh, in moving into the moving ahead with the transformation and now that we are a complicated architecture so we have never seen uh, a day where we are without this tool so for us to appreciate how it would have been for us without this is slightly difficult but i can i can only imagine <laughs> sure sure and 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 there have been times when uh, we also were amazed by the way your team was using it like i remember this spot rollout which you just mentioned your central yeah. devops team to was able to roll it out without the developers even knowing about it right like yeah. uh, at least in the sandbox environment for the developer the day to day life didn't change only the guard rules changed so yeah. yeah that was a good testament of you know the philosophy itself not maybe the product needs more work but then yeah. at least the philosophy is in the right direction right absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. so so given this i i feel uh, Do do you see as fitting in your future as well, right? Like you are, uh, you must be having like the long term roadmaps, and you know, do you see facets fitting well there, and uh, or 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 do you see that we need to evolve a little bit more to be part of you when you evolve further big? Like, what is the size till which you are comfortable using facets? Uh, to be blunt, yeah. Sure. 
so anshul like i mentioned earlier right i think even while evaluation because of just the fundamental construct of how the tool is made right uh, i could see the complexity going 5x 10x and the the tool still working for us and i stay true to that evaluation even right now uh, if it if i think about you know purple in the future we are obviously in the journey of ensuring that we achieve a properly distributed application architecture where which is a good balance of uh, you know domain led services plus microservices uh, you know don't want to overtly go into only microservices just for the heck of it uh, which which means constant reevaluation of you know what should be clubbed as a one service what should be a different service uh, and so on and so forth uh, which obviously adds to that layer of complexity uh and and definitely see the solution facets the tool still working for us with 10x more complications with 10x more scale so that is that is definitely ticks the box there uh, uh in terms of it staying true to the uh, construct with which we started which is empowering the developers as well as the tools capability to handle uh, that complexity as well as an orchestrate everything beautifully uh the second part of it is obviously when we look at say developer experience or you know developer productivity or basically from an engineer's perspective right we would want to empower them even more even now there are certain use cases for which they are you know uh, feeling slightly uh, uh, you know limited by uh, certain uh, things not being there or so on and so forth and True. over a period of time that we have implemented like for example our engineers mentioned that you know we need to have role based access control for us to control every every finer aspect of you know who can release what and you know what kind of applications sub applications uh, can be selectively released by whom and so on and so forth so that was something which was very important for them to really uh, get on board and we that is something that we built together uh so anyway so coming to the second point which is the, the first point definitely is that i can see the complexity and scale going up and the solution still working point number 2 long story short is i definitely see this extensibility in the tool that no matter what our developer problems will be in the future it can be incorporated and i see you know uh, uh facets team also playing that role of keeping an open ear to our problems and being very proactively in solving our problems uh where and that is extensibility that i see so definitely i think on these two aspects uh, uh you know that is that would be my request to you as well that you know keep working with us to keep identifying what are the next level of problems that we can solve for the developers because at the end of the day if we truly want to achieve aligned autonomy and uh, they need to be autonomous in truly every sense which needs a lot of uh, tools and platforms to be institutionalized true true uh, it means a lot uh, coming from you suyash and it's a great validation for us and and uh, you rightly said and our ears are open we are working with you know uh, with purple and other partners to you know co build because this is the place where we get the real insights you know we can build whatever product we want in our head but when it actually gets used it it, it is a different kind of satisfaction and the kind of feedback which we get then is really relevant so yeah we're happy to keep collaborating Uh, thanks a lot uh, for this insightful session suyash uh, before we take questions i will just like to uh, walk through our audience through uh, what exactly is changing in platform engineering and what we do we'll it, it's just a couple of slides and then we will open it for questions okay sure okay let me just share my screen uh one second sorry it's a wrong presentation which is open <laughs> okay anyways i'll get started while this is uh, opening uh, so basically uh, i i just wanted to introduce our audience with you know uh, what is happening in platform engineering and what exactly is it about so i i won't go into depths of it 
but i just wanted to cover that how is ops evolving to platform engineering you know uh, like because people are used to going the ops way and they call it devops they call it you know uh, system engineering and what not but uh, but the main shift which is happening between ops and platform engineers and these are the same guys you know uh, who just shift the role which they are playing in case of ops uh, they were mostly owner of the infrastructure especially production and it was like we talked about right it was about ticket ops uh, and it was very people oriented and things like tribal uh, tribal knowledge and those things came into the picture because you know we were dependent on few set of people and a process to get through any changes you know and and challenges for their role were mostly like how to keep my you know up times fine and how do i maintain my infrastructure and and these these challenges were not at all shared with the developers right developers were just uh, you know catering to uh, creating business value and 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 they used to then only selectively uh, support uh, ops team uh, in running of those things now as a platform engineer the major shift happens is you don't be the owner of infrastructure but you become enabler of these infrastructure you know uh, so like we said about the autonomy so it will automatically drive developers to do it themselves so you are saying you are the owner of what you develop but i will enable you to do it in the best possible way and i'll give you the right level of abstraction so that you don't go and you know learn all the skills which i have uh, so it becomes very process oriented and the challenges are now more like a product you know uh, you are building a product for your dev team so uh, and so you are taking requests for them you are taking you know uh, uh, things which they want to do it faster and in, in this process you are also putting in uh, standardizations and guardrails in place so that none of the changes which they do uh, are going haywire right so this is how uh, ops is evolving uh, going forward where do we fit in uh, so if you see now right now the developers and platform engineers were stacked together before the infrastructure now imagine a self serve layer coming in between which is owned by this platform engineering group and facets right uh, and together they create this thing on this uh, uh, platform which will enable their developers to directly manage their production infrastructure you know uh, so and, and and in this process we are enabling platform engineering because these people are able to shift uh, you know to the uh, role of enabler rather than you know being in between and doing all the automations right and, and how so ever good your devops team is they will never invest in building a ui and and you know making it intuitive for the developers they will always focus on the automation side but given if you work with facets uh, platform you'll be able to focus on the right things which will definitely increase your developer productivity the standardizations will come in because the automation you write are centralized and are used by multiple people so it's a truly collaborative platform and eventually it will lead to a lot of innovation you know uh and i like this quote a lot by charity mayers uh, who, uh, who is the city of sahnikom that it should be easy to do the right things and hard to do the right, wrong things and this is the core philosophy which we follow while uh, we are building facets yeah so that's that's about it now uh, we are open to questions so uh, feel free to just post them on the q and a channel Okay uh I have a question by Gaurav uh there are organization like that are quite dependent on people rather than tools what are the baby steps they can take to move towards more automation there is a cost to everything yeah so uh Suresh would you like to chime in on that or yeah sure sure uh, you know so if you think about it right uh, you can predominantly map everything out in the maturity curve right and uh, if you if you think about you know even purple or other in other uh, organizations as well and if you look at say infrastructure management as a, a fundamental engineering tenet now that will have a certain maturity curve right the maturity curve is everything is ad hoc at the lowest maturity and everything is data driven and automated in the highest maturity right True. now the constant strive should be towards moving in the positive direction always right so uh, 
if something everything is ad hoc and people de dependent like you mentioned right can you start by creating a, a catalog of all your infrastructure into a central blueprint and can you start by creating checklists of what are the steps to be done so that the things become repeatable right the next stage to a completely ad hoc people dependent thing is making it repeatable right uh, once you reach that stage that is when you realize that you know now you're ready to take the next stage right because even if you move to any developer platform it will also need you to create your infrastructure blueprint which application is using what uh, you know how you know what are the database connections required between which uh, which applications and and so on and so forth right what are, what are the egress like and so on and so forth right so i think the first thing you should do uh, if you are at an, in an organization which has a lot of people dependency is to start documenting everything and and ensuring that it has a certain format target repeatability and consolidation of information as the first stage because even if you are going to the next stage i think that will be something which will be required uh, i think today's day and age a lot of these things are available pay as you go so you might be surprised with you know what you are able to achieve uh, even if you you are at a small scale with with a minimal investment you will be able to you know take yourself up the maturity curve by using certain tools right i think uh, that is bang on point and and like you said uh, i feel that uh, you know the first step toward this is making your mind open right sometimes that is the most difficult part you know uh, because Uh, obviously there will be cost to things right whenever there is a change whether it is uh, towards the automation or bringing a new person in and training him or if he, that person leaves or maybe the process breaks or a new technology come so the cost is always going to be there so having that long term vision and investing towards the right future which you did right right before even facets came along right at least that vision was there you know uh yeah. once that ha starts happening i think uh, things will fall in place yeah so uh let's just wait a couple of minutes for any more questions just, just one more thing to add on to this because i yeah. i feel a lot of these uh, uh, a lot of people have these kind of questions and uh in many cases i've also you know offline interacted with with people who always uh, you know ask me this question that how do i make a business case for this right Uh, mm -hmm. what should be the rationale of uh, you know how do i convince because if you talk about purely the company dynamics every company has a different dynamics i was of course in a position where i could take the decision but uh, in many companies uh, people might not be in that position to take that decision so what is that rationale because uh, pure finance people or leaders will see it like an additional cost right i think the way to think about it is that slightly look into the future maybe one year one and a half year uh, think about where your infrastructure could be or uh, you know what kind of scale you would be operating at and in fact get your finance team only to give you this information and just just tell those people that you know if you are targeting this in one year if we go by the things the way the things currently are i might meet two more people so mm. instead of us having those two more people can we invest the same amount into something right now are we willing to make this investment today so that tomorrow we don't need to invest continuously right so that is something uh, you know which is uh, which is the right way to look about it that you know can i ensure that by doing certain things and by investing that amount right now i am able to uh, you know not have an investment and in fact get a return on my investment uh, uh, right now because it at end of the day it's all about the investment and the payback period right any true, investment true. is going to be paid back in a certain amount of time depends on your company in terms of how much payback period is okay with them but that is typically true. the way to convince people in my opinion right and and you're bang on and we have met many people who are trying to tie this down with a you know business rois and and trying to figure out a case to put in front of business but you know some some things are intangible you know you you can't put numbers to all of the thing for most of them you can right uh, but 
but that uh, that is really a good input like how to convince your finance team <laughs> into <laughs> you know and and with this tools sprawl which is out there like there are so many tools which people don't even think about uh, before buying because it's just in line with their thinking once uh, a tool comes which is more disruptive and will require more investment that is the when problem starts mm-hmm. happening yeah okay i'll just wait a couple of more minutes uh, if any questions are coming otherwise i think we can end this but it was great suyash like uh, it's always great talking with you you know i always get new ideas <laughs> and this one was especially helpful which you just said yeah sure no no i think my pleasure and so thanks for having me always invigorates me to have these kind of conversations i just hope i am able to influence even one person uh, to take <laughs> this approach of empowering the developers and you know operating in a aligned autonomy i think it would be time yeah. worth you know worth spending <laughs> sure sure uh, right then i think uh, people are shy or they're not asking having any question we were too clear so <laughs> i think we can end this and thanks a lot everyone for your time and especially suyash for your time uh, sure. and uh, see you again Yeah, we'll do it sometime again. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.